Hi there truck and trailer owners. Today we're going to be taking a look at Bolt's replacement toolbox latch assembly. This is going to be a replacement latch and lock retrofit kit for your truck or trailer toolbox. And what's cool about these is that the Bolt, which is breakthrough one key lock technology, will allow you to use your existing vehicle's key and code it to match the lock mechanism here on the latch. Now you do want to make sure you purchase the appropriate latch for your particular vehicle as the assemblies here for the lock mechanism is specific to certain types of keys depending on the manufacturer. We have these available for your domestic manufacturers as well as Nissan and Toyota. So we just replaced this one and our customers got a GM key and we coded it and we can see here it's in the lock position. I can't pull up on the mechanism. We took the customer's key for his vehicle and we're able to unlock it and open it back up. So we can easily lock this up, head over to our car, lock up the doors, get in, drive away, whatever we need to do, all with one key. This replacement latch assembly is great for a damaged latch on your toolbox, or maybe you just purchased this truck and the toolbox that they had in there has a different key. Maybe you didn't get those keys and you want everything to match your truck. You could easily put the retrofit kit in and then you can now use your single key for your vehicle to operate your toolbox. Or again, you can get an old broken one back up and running again. And here we can take a look at the latch mechanism here. This one is designed for a dual latch setup as well as a single. If you're just putting it in for a single, you've got your latch mechanism here, but you can see it's got the accommodations here at the bottom for a rod mechanism, which would run over to a dual latch setup. The assembly is going to be weatherproof, so you don't have to worry about moisture getting in and damaging any of our components. And it has a stainless steel finish on it, so it'll have a nice look for many years to come. You can see here the lock mechanism, how it operates. That's unlocked and this is locked. You can see how it goes down and it prevents you from lifting up the lever. When you unlock it, there's nothing to interrupt the operation of the latch mechanism. Now, when you're choosing a latch mechanism, you do need to keep in mind that even though you've got the appropriate make for your key, that depending on the year of your vehicle and stuff, the keys may or may not be compatible with the latch. So I highly recommend on the product page for the latch you're about to purchase to just scroll down below the description and you'll find a compatibility chart there that has the proper models and years that are compatible with this latch. You can see our old latch here. The locking mechanism has been damaged and looks like what likely had happened is that he had locked it and then corrosion and everything else set in and he probably had to bust into it to get into his toolbox. So we're gonna be replacing the whole mechanism here to fix it. There are rivets that hold it in, and there's also a rod on the back side that connects to the back of the latch. It'll be easier to disconnect the rod first from the back side while the latch is still solid. So there's a cover here that runs along the back. We're gonna remove all the screws. Looks like there's about five on this particular one. And they're self-tappers. So sometimes when you're unscrewing them, the last little bit, you gotta just kind of pull out with it. Now with all the screws removed, we're just gonna take the cover off, set it aside. And you can see the rod mechanism here on the back. This here is just gonna push off of there. It's a little tight just because it's been kind of rusted on there for a while. So you may need to use a screwdriver because it is kind of a metal tab, but it's just gonna push down and rotate out of the way. And once you get it pushed down, then the rod will actually just pull out of there. You gotta get it down just enough to where your rod is gonna clear the little tangs there. And then it'll just pop out. So now that the rod's loose, we can get the whole assembly out of there. We're gonna drill out the four rivets using a 3 16 drill bit. So now we've got them all drilled out, we'll just pull our assembly out. And then if there's any rivet material left, we'll wanna get that out of there. You can either continue drilling it, or in a lot of cases, you can grab a pair of pliers and just pull them out of there. Sometimes you can do it by hand. We can now have to go ahead and take our latch mechanism and we're gonna go ahead and code the key. To do that, we're gonna remove the lock from the mechanism. So just undo the nut on the back side there. 
Then we can slide the whole unit out once you've got it unthreaded. And now we're gonna grab the key that we're gonna be coating it to. This is a spare key for the customer's truck. So it matches the exact key for his ignition cylinder. This is the one that you wanna insert in here. This is gonna code automatically. So you see it's got this sticker on there. It tells you not to put anything in it until you've got the key that you want it to be coded to. So we're gonna code it to this one. This way it'll match all of his ignition keys. We're just gonna peel that cover off of there. And we wanna have the drain hole at the bottom. That's right there. We're gonna insert the key into the lock mechanism. We're gonna turn it. Then we're going to turn it back. Turn it again, turn it back, turn it again. And then we're gonna leave it in the locked position. And it's now ready to reinsert back into our latch. Now we can go ahead and start to insert inserting our latch. Now, when you took your old latch off, if you can get the gasket off it, you'll just wanna move your gasket over to your new latch. Our gasket was destroyed, it had been deteriorated. Most of it here was stuck on and we kinda of cleaned that off. So we're gonna be using butyl tape to seal it up. And I find it easier on this particular one to do it on the trailer side. So we're just gonna peel off the backing tape. I already kinda of ripped off some strips around the size that I want. And we can use part of the, kinda of the, the dirt pattern from the old one to help us determine where to place the butyl tape. And then we can wrap this around the back side. You can get butyl tape here at eTrailer. And when we're putting this on, we wanna make sure we're covering up the screw holes or the rivet holes there. So that way it seals up all the way around those as well. So now we got our butyl tape on. We're gonna take the lock mechanism. We're just gonna slide it up into position. We can then take our rivet gun, use the included rivets to put our latch into place. If you need a gun, you can pick one up here at eTrailer. Sometimes you have to pull the lever a couple of times to get the rivet to snap into place. We'll then just repeat this for the three remaining holes. We'll now take our lock mechanism. We're gonna slide it in with that drain facing the bottom. Then we're gonna slide our spacer on. and follow that up with the nut. And we can just snug it up with our pliers to ensure that it's all the way tightened. We can then slide on our lock arm and secure it with the included clip. You can push it on there, but in most cases to get it all the way on, you're likely gonna need a screwdriver to finish pushing it in the last little bit. And there we go. Now if you use butyl tape, you may have some excess squished here on the sides. You can just take your razor knife to trim that off. We can now slide our small clip back into place for our rod. We're gonna line it up with that hole, take the rod, slide it through the clip and your latch. Depending on how corroded your old rod is, it may be a tight fit, so you might have to tap it in there. And now that we've got that in, our latch replacement is complete. If your original latch didn't have a rod connected to it to, to begin with, then you won't need to connect one when going back together. Now at this point, the replacement of our latch is complete. One of the things you'll want to check though is your striker, because this one, while it is a direct replacement for our existing latch, the mechanism here is not compatible with the striker that is on the lid. So we're going to be replacing the striker as well. So that way it's going to be compatible with our new latch. If you have the same issue, you can get the striker here at eTrailer, and we're gonna show you how to install that now. Figure out how far your latch goes in, and then transfer that measurement here up on the top, just so we know how far in we need to set the striker. So we're gonna go ahead and make our marks where we're gonna be putting it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the old striker. It's held on with self-tappers on this one, 
So we're gonna be reusing this hardware since our new one doesn't come with any. So if you can, I recommend reusing your old hardware. So I've gone ahead and marked it. We're gonna be putting it there, but you also wanna take your, the striker pin and just make sure too that when this is inserted, it's not gonna interfere with anything. It's gonna hit. Looks like we're gonna be fine here. It's gonna sit inside the lid. We're not gonna hit on the lip or anything like that. So we're good to go there. So now we're gonna run the striker bracket in with the reusing that old hardware. And then since this is slotted, I'm gonna make it so we can slide it a little bit back and forth. I'm gonna give myself a gap on the other side so that we can adjust with our new striker. Now you can pull it down and see, and then you can adjust it as necessary and re-tighten them back down. And here we can see that's gonna line up with our striker and everything should work out the way we need it to. So we can go ahead and insert the striker pin now and then install that. Now your striker pin does not come with a nut, so you are gonna to have to provide that. You can get that at your local hardware store. This is a quarter inch 20 thread. So we're just gonna put that on there and then we'll tighten it down. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter for the pin and 11 for the nut. So now we've got our pin in there. We're gonna go ahead and snug it up just a little bit to where we can still move it around. So it's a little bit too snug, so we're just gonna loosen it just a tiny bit. And then with it a little bit loose, we can adjust the distance that we need it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of bring it down to get an idea. We push it up. This looks pretty close to about the point we want to be. If we look at the gap that we have left versus the distance the pin needs to go until it goes underneath the latch. So I'm just going to hold it right there in this position so we know where it goes. It's not a bad idea to just make a mark here because you may need to make some subtle adjustments to this later. So we're just going to put a little mark on the side of our pin and then a mark there so we know where they lined up. And then we'll tighten it down, we'll test the fit, and if we need to make some subtle adjustments, we can move it up or down as necessary. We'll just check our fit. And it looks like we are latched into place. So now I just wanna make any subtle adjustments as necessary. We went ahead and made it just a little bit tighter to eliminate any gap to make it nice. And we can see that it opens up nice and smooth. It closes nice and smooth, and if we lock it, we can't open it with either handle. Now, if you had any covers or panels you had to remove to access components for releasing your latch, go ahead and reinstall those now. And that completes our look at Bolt's Replacement Toolbox Latch Assembly.